Hey, we've got another leg by leg. We've got a Rogaine today. This was a Rogaine run by Northwest Orienteering Club in Riverhead Forest. Uh, it was 30 controls over 90 minutes. And I'm talking to Nick Harris who posted the, the fastest time overall. And he got all but two of the control points for 1,100 points out of a total of 1,200. So let's see how he went about planning his course and if he had any difficulties out there in the forest cool thanks nick thanks for coming on leg by leg let's take a look yeah. at the rogaine from earlier today here's an overview of, of the whole area and um can you start with sharing your thoughts about the planning process yeah no problem um so the first thing i looked at was you know just trying to find the outliers um, you know, controls that really aren't an option to get to. Um, and the two down the sort of southeastern corner, 51 and 56, are pretty clearly out on their own, lots of climb, long way away from any other control. So just discounted those straight away. Right. Um, kept the option in my head if, you know, coming back, if we had heaps of time, then maybe it would be on to nip out and get them. But um, generally speaking, they weren't part of the plan because they're just yeah. too far away. So yeah, it really is just a distance thing. If you compare the distance to the nearest controls and then yeah. compare it to like how close many of these controls are, yeah, it's, it's like good. Four three times, times more, four times. Yeah, it's yeah. probably really worse. But it's worse actually because you have to go around um, to get to them. Yeah, plus the climb. So yeah, they were really not not really in in the plan. So that's number one. So now you now you know kind of what I knew what I was, which controls I was dealing with, um, and then you sort of I always look for clusters of controls where you know where there's lots of points in a small area, and then generally speaking, try to clear those because um, you got to make the most of those you know of the vet of the value in the in a small area. So there's there's kind of broadly two clusters I I thought. And they're in the, the northern yep. part of the map, um, separated by the big green blob. Yeah, so you've got these guys are all really close together. So like your points yep. per minute is looking pretty good. Yeah. And same with these guys here. They're all pretty close together. Yeah, that's right. And then so you know, you're knowing that that's where that's where you're going to be spending the time is is in those bunches. Um, and then the last bit of the puzzle is kind of how do you, which way round do you do do your loop? So usually the way to approach that is to figure out what, what's the best way back that offers you options to cut off controls. So and this is last, kind of planning in reverse. You're starting to think about yeah. the last 20 minutes of, of yeah, the 90 minute allocation. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. So on your way back, if you find yourself short of time, you want to have options to shortcut Um some you know drop controls off your list so that you can shortcut home and that group down the bottom um oh the stuff here yep yeah 34 47 58 yeah and 46 so 46. those are all easy to sort of just drop off and and cut your loop a little bit shorter right if so if to, you had so lots of time you could do that if you had yep. a little less time you'd do that yeah even less time you do that yep. and then you can actually go yeah like that if you so it's a bit you of a spring it's like a bungee that. yeah yep so that sort of so that means okay so it's going to be a clockwise kind of loop knowing that, the, that that's your finish direction and so then yeah that's right that's the general idea and then it's just a case of trying to find us the smoothest lines through those controls um you obviously have a fair idea about how many controls you're going to get get done. I mean, you're, there, there's a bit of contingency in that end, but you're still, you know, that's like a 10, 10 or 20% margin yeah. of error maybe at most. So you've yeah. obviously done this enough times to have a fair idea about how far you get. Yeah, that's right. And having run at Riverhead, you know, a few times as well, you get an idea of what, what's realistic um, and you, you know, you can trust the setting and, and the bivouac 
a gain series to be, you know, pretty achievable. In the longer row gains, 24 hours and so on and so forth, there's so much more variable, so many more variables involved that you, you know, it's a much more um, difficult um, planning process. Yeah. But, um, you know, for these ones, it's, you know, I think it's realistic to go, yeah, to sort of look at that and, and get a gut feel about whether you can make it or not. Then as we've talked about, if you've got cutoff options, then you can just, if you have to, then you can drop a few controls to make sure you get back on time. Okay, so let's have a look at this first this first block. Yeah. And let's see how, how you got these guys done. Maybe too much, here we go. So coming out of the start, um, sort of wound our way through those tracks to 38. Um, I had my friend um, Andreas Borger running with me. He was a, he's a, um, an accomplished ultra marathoner, but is new to oh, yeah. um, navigation. His um, interest in navigation spurred by doing the Revenant. Oh, nice. Um, yeah, yeah. So he's, um, so he's starting to um, get interested in maps as a, as a result of that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so we, you know, we, I confess I was faffing trying to strap my watch on as um, we were running through there. So I'm not, a, <laughs> I'm not exactly sure where we went, but we got there and, you know, at the start of a row game, there's always a train of people. So yeah. um, we just sort of stayed in that. We got there, then down to 48, um, pretty much sticking on those tracks. Well, actually, I think we, I was still strapping my watch on. So I think we went as far as that clearing just northwest, no, 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 wrong direction. Uh, northwest and then back, yeah. Yeah. Then just yes. around the tracks, yeah. yeah. And then, yeah. And by that stage, I was right. So then we came back straight off the end of the track to 31. So I just sort of took a bearing across that, the um, scattered trees onto the rootstock, yeah. Yeah. And then just popped onto the track on the far side of that and followed that all the way around to 40 and ran onto it. Oops. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Were you a bit confused in this area? I was finding it a bit, a bit funky. Uh, I wasn't no, quite so actually gelling took, with the vegetation. We actually took the track north of 31. And coming in from that angle, yeah, that yeah. one, you just ran straight onto it. So it was visible yeah. from that direction. Nice. So no, it wasn't. It turned out not to be difficult. Although that you know that area from experience is, can can be a bit of a Bermuda Triangle. So I was yep. happy that we didn't have any issues. Yep. Then just north out on the track across the bridge and up to thirty. Sorry, okay. other direction. Going out this way. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. And then just got that, and then just popped around the little track bend up halfway along that. And then started crashing straight across on the sort of contour, going to 41. Oh, yeah. Okay. You're not going up. Yeah. Right. Sweet. Yeah. No. So just trying to hold the height across there to as far as 42 to string. Yeah. So that's a good observation that together. you've got quite a big hill hill here. There's a lot yeah. of contours there. And if you, you don't have to go up and down here any yeah. more times than you <laughs> you need and you to. really want to yeah no yeah. exactly right so but as it happened um we hit that first track and i wasn't exactly sure where i was at the time in retrospect it's plainly obvious because we crossed the stream on the second track and um oh, yeah. and which gives you you know that that gives you two, two linear features crossing gives you a point um yeah so i should have clicked oh we're here and then just followed the red line that you've got but actually um coming out of that green i was a bit bamboozled and so i just went up on the track and then back down so just skirting around that green bulb yeah yeah okay yeah um and then 42 was really just a case of um contouring and you know holding the compass it was yep fine yep uh 53 we went pretty straight so just left of the green blob across the tracks um yeah, something like that. We're probably a, li a little bit further right of that line, but um, mm -hmm. but you know, close enough. Yep. And then um, going to thirty nine, pretty much just um, 
stepping stones across. Oh, we're going a little bit further left of that. See the see the fallen tree. This big guy. Yep, he's pretty much just used that as a stepping stone, and gave, that gave me an angle to cross the, the stream through yeah. there onto the next track along the track a touch, and then kind of came off roughly on that corner. Yeah, and then well, again, I was aiming off slightly to the oh, left. Yeah. Nice. Probably okay. unnecessary, but um, so the safety of that track, there's just yeah, you just know to yeah. go into it. Yeah. Yeah. I actually think in retrospect, probably popping up to the other track would have been better, but a bit more direct. Yeah. And also just a um, probably more a bit of better visibility of the flag. Um, oh, yeah. because coming up that track, it was behind the boulder and didn't really see it until we walked past it. So Okay. Um, but you know, those are little micro yeah. choices that if you're if you're onto it enough in the on the spot, then you can get it. Then straight up the track, just Shortcut across that corner. Yep, up to 49. Yep. Yep, and then crash back sort of south onto the next track and up the top to 54. That's all pretty self-explanatory. It's just following tracks, really. Yeah, so just zooming out a bit, it looks like you've, yeah, you, you know you're trying to get all of those controls, so you're just trying to do them with the minimal yep. possible distance and yep. the minimal yep. possible climb. Yep, that's right. Um, and so then it was just using the big road across. We went to 36 first. Oh, yeah. So just down the okay. road, took the side road, down to the slip at the um, end, sorry, the skid at the end, and then up the little track. Okay. Yep. And then just dropped straight down onto the, the next track, going to 44. Yep. Yeah. that. Yeah, took the little indistinct one because the the obvious track they didn't actually touch the um, control feature. From there, just straight up um, to the second track junction where one, two, three, four, five tracks meet. And then just basically compass down sort of using that spur into the feature there. Now this next one, we went to 57 and see the squiggly re-entrance tried to sort of slide across the top of those yep right so you're generalizing this group of stuff yep and you're just trying to get around the top yep nice. and then onto the track and then just let the track lead lead me onto the um yep. those knolls which were so there's a really good catching feature there you can't miss the track yeah came down yep. off the corner yep nice. um and then next was 45 so we bashed up to the track Pretty much in the white, yep, and then followed that up all the way up to the skirt at the top. Oh, yeah, just past the green, and then on that bend, just dropped them. Just you just took the compass from there and dropped on it, yeah. And then 50, I, know, I thought that this was a potentially a trap, um, attacking that little point feature on the sort of fairly vague side of a yeah. vague spur. I think that's a really key observation that there's a lot of danger here. You've got this. Yeah. There's a vague spur here. There's nothing terribly distinctive. The vegetation, you're not quite sure how distinctive that's going to be in advance. And you're after a point feature, so you could easily overrun down here. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It'd be really uh, really easy to just yeah, lose contact and not be sure where you are on that slope and then just be blundering around. So um, the way to avoid that is to aim off. And so we just aimed off to the left. So I knew that when we came into that, Across the spur and into the the big reentrant. Yeah, that we would be to the left. Yeah. Okay, so you've seen that this is a line here that you're not going to accidentally cross. The contours in this valley are pretty distinct. It's even got yep. a stream in the middle. Yes. So you're aiming intentionally this way, yep. and then you know which way you've got to go once you get the stream. And that's right. Yeah, and then it's just a case of trying to get roughly on the right height. So we could see the bottom of the reentrant where the watercourse is. And yep. then just tried to gauge roughly the height and just slide along. And um, yeah, we came in pretty much where you'd drawn it into that little white patch. And then we just had to cross through the green and, mm -hmm. um, and got that. So got it smoothly. So it was the trap avoided. And just next one is pretty straightforward. It's just the spur guides you onto it. So we went up into the white forest and then just honed down the spur. Um, 
and then the next one, a um, bit of a choice, you know, you could, there's the road, there's the track, there's a road to the left, there's a track to the right, or there's just trying to use the stream. Um, I decided that the road would just be um, easiest, so we just went as, yeah, pretty much like yeah, that. Yeah, same as me. Boom, out to the nice. road, and then just hoon the road. I mean, the roads give you such quicker travel, and you can't, you don't make mistakes, so mm -hmm. um, it was a pretty clear option. So then from there, we went to 37. Um, just along the tracks, and then to 52. And then here we made a bit of an, or well, I made a bit of an error. I was busy chatting with Andreas, and yeah. so we we hit that intersection. There's two sort of um, loops in the trail, and then there's a track junction. Um, we went high there, and my my plan had just been to go take the track along the bottom, like this one here, and then up. Yeah, yeah, but. I wasn't concentrating and we went high there like you've got it and then I was like no I want to be on the bottom drop to the bottom and then miscounted the tracks and overran that track so you went down here and then yeah yeah oh yeah. okay yeah so overshot um actually all the way to the next intersection oh faffing busy busy chatting yeah and then I was like oh overshot so we then just came back and fixed that yeah so that yep. was an error yep um it's just concentration yep just poor, poor concentration the line that you drew was actually you know was a, a you know a better better um approach that little track mm. with this with the um kind of banks, just feeds you on at right the right height and, yeah nice. you know that was a much better approach than what i did so um cool. from there we went to 32 so just back out around the across the stream yep. i actually went around the track um yeah and then 46 just using the track um and now how's the time going here did you check the time at 46 uh yeah so at 35 we were looking at well should do we have time to go and get those ones up the back and i can't remember exactly how much you mean time at 32 had, sorry at 32. um no, no, 35 30. oh yeah you're having a think and decided at that point, nah, um, we'll just stick with our plan. And yep. um, and at 46, I just felt confident that we had time. I think we had, um, I don't know, 15 minutes or something there. 15 minutes to do that. Yep. Yeah. Looks good. Um, so then um, didn't want to go through the, through the yellow stripe because that can be pretty gnarly and punishing. Um, so I just went round the, uh, yeah, and, and with the um, marsh in the middle as well. So you, even coming to 46 is that little bridge across the marsh. On the way from 32. Uh, there's a little bridge. Yeah. Oh, you just attempted to do that. <laughs> no, 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 no. Contemplated oh, it. Yeah. And then I was, I was just thinking about the sort of advice I would give to Tahi, which is, you know, if you're going to shortcut a corner, it, if it's if it's green, if it's if it's gnarly, you need to be saving a lot of distance. Yeah. Um, if it's only a short distance, then you want the short, then you want the running to be clean and fast, or else yeah. it isn't worth it. It's best to just go round. So we just went round. Yes. Um, then we came up the track, up the road. To the intersection and yep, then all the, way. the little track to 34. Yep. yep. Um, and then down to the next track junction, popped out onto the road and then went right around the green blob. Yep. Into 42. Oh, sorry, sorry, that's 47. Seven. Yeah, pretty much like that. Then just again followed the track down. That's one, two, three junctions above the junction above 58. One, two. Yep. So it's just counting those off, um, getting that, you know, that perpendicular track is a real e easy place to catch yourself on, on those sorts of things. So that was a, yep. and I I looked at 58 and I thought, well, you got two re-entrants that create sort of a V to funnel you in. Yeah. So um, even if you're over here, you end up there. And if you head here, you end yeah, up down exactly. there. Yeah, exactly. You can kind of correct yourself. But 
as it happened, the bear, compass bearing was good and we went straight onto it. Um, and yeah, so even though, yeah, so it, it, that felt fairly safe and it worked out well. Um, then we went to 33. Um, I went around to the left of that green blob. Oh, yeah. Really should have just gone straight, but. Possibly. Um, yeah, it's pretty safe going around. Okay. Yeah. Then just collected ourselves. Yeah, exactly like that. Just collected ourselves on the track off that little bend. Um, and then they're pretty much straight, just leaning, angling a little bit left. Um, Did you get the track? Uh, yeah, but a little bit higher than than where you've got it. Yeah, something like that. Um, then there's a knoll on that track. Um, there's a, yeah, just there. That little knoll is, uh, I use that as the signal to go in. Um, so so you're, you know the track's there and you've got this little hill yep. and you know that you're, on the opposite side of that nice yeah because i'd really we'd really only just hit the track we hadn't gone along along it very far yep. i just wanted to be certain where i was on yeah. there so yeah it's worthwhile good. because of this kind of it's not a terribly distinct corner it's hard yeah, to tell and running in, with it where you are along there yeah and running into that area where the control is it's also quite vague and i you know having yep. been there to those places before as well i know that I, it's it's not hugely obvious yeah um, so yeah, so you know, just trying to. Sweet. Um, yeah, so that was that was us. Oh, yep. we actually. Something else at the end. Your route, your route to the finish is better, but we actually came back to the track and through the small, through the green, came yep. back through the green. Not much in it. Yep. Nah, not really. But um, yeah, so that was us. Sweet. Pretty happy with that. Yeah. 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 Pretty much. Um, I mean, we're. Just that, that fast. We ran pretty but, well. Yeah. There was, um, I mean, I think we had about four minutes to spare, um, oh, yeah. which is so clearly not enough to get up out the back um, to, to those outlying controls. Um, That's, yeah, these guys early on, yeah, you're yeah, going to have to have so, you know, much more contingency to get those guys. Yeah, I don't think, I mean, we weren't, yeah, we were, uh, oh, well, at least I was. Andreas didn't have any trouble keeping up with me, but um, I would, don't think I could have run a lot faster than I did. Um, but pretty clean, not too many, you know, no mistakes except that silly uh, 52. Um, yeah, just yeah. Didn't just getting yeah, distracted. Didn't, yeah, didn't, I'd be interested to hear what other people, like you, including you, did, because even just in this discussion, I can see, you know, that fine-tuning that, you know, yep. the, the route that you probably took. Um, yeah, I think I'll um, add it on to the video at the end. Yeah, so yeah. You can watch just, it for that. Just so, yeah, everyone knows, Gene scored the same amount of points as me walking. Walking fast, mind mm -hmm. you. Walking fast. I was, yeah. I was working up those hills, don't you worry. But I was, yeah, definitely like burning, definitely losing time. People when their dogs are running past me on, on that road. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So, okay, yeah, um, yeah. Yeah. You know, like, you, it's difficult to plan, you know, to get the perfect plan for, you know, for a row game. And so you just got to take your best stab and go out and try and execute it as cleanly as possible. Yeah. And then adjust, you know, adjust to, you know, adjust your route um, to the day, depending on how you're going. So, Yep. And it's just what the sport, what the race format is. And, yep. um, you know, we, it, ours went well. We didn't have to really mm -hmm. change anything. Um, and so, cool. yeah. Sweet. Thanks, Nick. No, pleasure. Thank you. So you can see there's a system to the way Nick was running uh, and the way he was planning. Uh, he's not just going for what, what's the easiest and what's the easiest and what's the easiest and what's the easiest because that works you know, for the first few, but then you find that you've, you know, left out a big part of the course and then you have to go out of your way to get it again or you um, get all the ones that kind of line up on one side of the one side of a river but then you realize you've left some all the way over there and um, I think the concept that's most important to, to think about optimizing is the points per minute so obviously you have to do a bit bit of the rogue to and a bit of orienteering to get used to how many points 
how, how far you can actually get in a certain space of time but you can look at the map and get a relative sense of how close the controls are and how difficult the terrain is between the controls and the more you understand the map the more accurate you can uh, read this kind of detail off the map but think about points per minute how long is it between control points how slow is it going to be and are you getting more points per minute over here doing these four controls or are you getting more points per minute over there doing these four controls and unless you're getting them all you're going to be making this you have to sacrifice some of the controls at some stage and you need to sacrifice the ones that are going to give you the lowest points per minute and that's basically all that it comes down to and so if yeah everyone's saying oh yeah well obviously i mean that <laughs> of course you're trying to get the more points in the shortest amount of time um, so let's get into some of the the more specifics um, some more specific tips about how you might do that and we'll look at um, my route uh, as well let's take a look let's do a little quick root tutorial quick root is a software made by matt strong and it's designed for overlaying your route as exported from uh, whatever gps recording device you have such as a uh, watch uh, gps running watch or like a gps tracker and you can overlay that onto any image uh, but orienteering maps as the, the images of interest here and we will be if, if you want to download quick route then there's the website at the top here mattstrong.ac forward slash quick route and uh, so type that into your internet browser and it will take you to this page click on download latest version uh, download that to your Windows computer. Click to install. I've already got it installed, so I'm not going to install it again. Uh, but you can follow your nose through that part of the process. And uh, yes, exit, close. Um, I'll just close that. So we now you should have this little queue icon here, here's quick root. We're going to create a new quick root file. You're gonna need the map. I got the map from the organizers. If you can't get it from the organizers, then you should scan the piece of paper that you used and uh, get that on your computer as a JPEG file. Uh, if you get a PDF from the organizers, there's uh, many easy online PDF to JPEG converters that you can use. Just search them on the internet and you will find them. That's how I made this. I just got a PDF from the organizers and this is the, uh, the image that I got from the organizers of, of the map. And there we go, all the row gain from today. I'm going, so I went, Go back to here. So, new map. We're going to browse for the map file. There it is. We're again series. We're going to use from file to get the root. I uh, downloaded this from my Strava. So, my, my watch records the GPS, and when I get home, that goes through the internet to Strava or to Garmin Connect, and I can download the GPX file from those services. So I'm going to use that and bring those together into quick route. And there we have it. We have the map and we have this uh, red line, which is my GPS route. And I'm going to use some known points just to line those in. So that wasn't too hard because those like turnaround points were, were quite obvious parts of my route today. And you can see that it fits in fairly well. So you can, we can just do this approximately for now. You get the idea, you know, start there, start there, finish there. Um, and you just keep lining it in with the points that you knew you went to, which is obviously the control circles. If you found, <laughs> found the flag, you know, you knew precisely where you were. If you crossed a track, you knew, oh, hopefully you should have known precisely where you were. So some of those points are quite good to to line up cool um here's one i prepared earlier uh we we'll, oh, was that it no 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 uh no 
there it is. Um, quicker. I saved it. Can we, uh, that's not it. That was fun though. Okay, here it is. So this is what I did before. I've set the color scheme to be six minutes per kilometer as green and 12 minutes per kilometer to be red. If you're on this mode, you can see my all, my, all the alignment points that I've used, which are all on the tracks and control points that I, where I knew precisely where I was located at that moment. And if you click on to pointer, then you can see the colors. There's also the side panel here, which if you would like to do further analysis, you can add uh, split times. So I might add a split time at 38 and a split time at 31 and a split time at 35, 53, sorry, 39. And you can see these split times up here on, on the left. And you can also just use the split on, on your watch if you like. And so this is quite helpful, or quite quite helpful way of doing splits and comparing the paces because it shows you how long I took between these controls, the straight line distance, the route distance, the average distance, and there's a whole lot of columns you can choose that have different statistics in them to display uh, things like how fast you're entering and exiting control circles. Um, <clears throat> maybe that reflects you're planning ahead. So maybe if something you're trying to work on is planning ahead so it can be smoother through the control circles. You can actually measure that and it's nice to have a measurable metric. Um, and yeah, just keep adding all these all these little points um, to show it's not, yeah, cool. So I think you get the idea. Let's jump across to the image that I went file export as an image so we'll, we'll jump across to to that guy here it is in paint um oops i had some scrolls okay clean image and paint so the things i wanted to <clears throat> communicate now are so this is, this is my, my quick route you can see the the color the colors um exported out there. So the few things I wanted to communicate about my course, because there are a number of people asking, how does someone who's walking uh, get so many points? And I covered 8.8 .8 kilometers. So how far can you walk in 90 minutes? Well, in this terrain, I can walk maybe about 8.8 .8 kilometers in 90 minutes, probably a little bit further, because as you'll see, there were a few errors. But largely, if you're just walking the whole time, you can, that, that's no problem. I imagine much of the field could have done that. So it really comes down to the navigation and it comes down to, I think, uh, the psychology of it. It comes down to being aggressive. So let's just take a few little examples just to illustrate the points and they might seem minor, but when you think about how many times this is repeating over the the length of of the race, you can see how it adds up. So, to 38, pretty simple, right? You've got this trail, this mountain bike trail here. Uh, more trails there. We'll think about 31 as well. And you've got trails. So, so, so that, that's basically the simplification of the leg uh, is uh, are these trails going on here. And almost everyone off the start line went to there and then along the trail. And I cut through and was like in the lead again and I'm walking. So that's pretty interesting that someone who's walking from the start finds himself at any moment kind of in the lead of, of all the people who were going towards 38. And it was for like a second before I got overtaken by the runners again, but I ran less distance because I went like that. I went just straight through there. Okay. Minor, minor. You're saying, Gene, that's not, that doesn't explain you getting 1100 points when all the runners couldn't get it. But you see it just happening again and again. As soon as I get to the track, goes like this. As soon as I get to the track, I'm jumping straight through to the junction. It's a perfect line. I know where I'm going. I know I'm looking for the junction on the, I'm looking for this junction on the other side. And then I'm just cutting all these corners just again and again and again, and doing it very decisively. I know where I'm going. I've been reading the map in advance. I know exactly when to cut off 
you can see it again here. There's a trail and there's a trail here. And as soon as I punch 48, I know in advance, I'm just cutting that corner straight away and I'm shaving off, I don't know, what's that, 50 meters. Not, not life-changing, but when you just keep doing that again and again and again, and it's also about doing it decisive. So decisively, trail here, trail here. I, I know that I'm leaving this corner from up here. Like I've planned it in advance. I know exactly what I'm gonna do as soon as I see this green, as soon as I see it open up after that very dense bit of forest, I'm going straight down the hill. I've got my compass lined up beforehand and I'm just, just walking straight into the forest, not slowing down at all straight down the bank, <laughs> straight down to the other trail. And as soon as I hit the other trail, I know what's going on because I've spent all this time on this trail up here, checking it out. I know what's coming up. So there's a lot of that. There's a lot of that going on. Plus just being, I guess, competent with the contours, which is a great challenge of Orange Hair and has been able to inter interpret the contours well. And, you know, navigating this stuff well, it takes time, it takes time. It's it's not, the visibility is not great. There's a lot of vegetation pushing you around. Um, so yeah, obviously that's, that's a long-term project is for everyone to get better at uh, the vegetation and, and contour navigation. But I think the psychology around just punching through all these little, from one track to the next, uh, you can see it again here, trail there, trail there, trail there. And I'm just cutting the corner through the middle. I could have, gone around but just lining the compass up i came up here got 36 straight through the forest i knew in advance where i was going i didn't stop at all just punching the control and and away so i knew where i was going i knew how i was exiting 36 before i got to 36 um again i'm sure so many people would have run down the trail and around there's no way that i can run while I was walking, so there's definitely no way. But cutting across here is going to be a lot faster than going around. Unless you're kind of, okay, it can be, is what I'm saying. It can be really fast to go straight through. I think a lot of people perhaps just don't like how dense the vegetation is and, I don't know, spider webs, <laughs> wet ground and stuff. So... Uh, it can be can be a bit tough, but I think once you get used to it, you realize that you're just saving so much time cutting these little corners off. Here we go again, straight through, straight through. There's no way I can get around there faster than, than going straight through. Cool. I think you think that makes sense. Um, and other, other than that, I didn't do anything different than what, Nick did uh, in the video. The planning was um, pretty much the same. Similar concept, a few slightly different decisions, but similar idea on the whole. Cool, I hope you found that quick tutorial useful.